and now we need to finish strong. Well, there you have it. Let the investigations begin. The new Speaker of the House ready for a fresh era on Capitol Hill. Congressman Kevin McCarthy getting handed the gavel after 15 rounds of voting for most of this last week. Well, good morning, folks. Welcome to Wake Up America Weekend. I'm Carl Higby. It's January 7th, Saturday. Well, the back and forth in Washington filled mostly with the drama. The most recent amount of votes vo uh, voting going to uh, Congressman McCarthy Hakeem Jeffries actually in a fairly you know, nice speech, handed over the gavel last night. Our big brother headline, you know, obviously headlines all this this week. President Biden, finally, though, he's going to be heading to the border in Texas. He's expected in El Paso tomorrow. We're going to be talking about that. But drama intrigued and plenty of suspense. The quest for a new Speaker of the House, a nail biter for most of the week. National correspondent Logan Raddick actually is standing by in Washington with more on how this whole thing went down with Kevin McCarthy winning the speakership after 15 rounds. Logan? Yeah, Carl, good to see you. It was a four day standoff here on Capitol Hill, but McCarthy eventually got those defectors to fall in line by uh, voting present in that 15th and final round of balloting, which made him the 55th Speaker of the House just around 1230 uh, this morning. But those members include Eli Crane, a newly elected uh, Republican from Arizona, Bob Good, Matt Rosendale from Montana, Andy Biggs of Arizona, Matt Gates, Lauren Boebert. They all voted present instead of voting for a different Republican candidate other than McCarthy. That is why we went to so many uh, ballots because of those holdouts and some others originally. But uh, we saw initially there were 20 holdouts and then about 14 switched over at once. And then finally those six got in line and voted present. But this is what McCarthy said after he finally won the speakership and he made promises to govern as a conservative. We will hold the swamp accountable from the withdrawal of Afghanistan to the origins of COVID and to the weaponization of the FBI. Let me be very clear. We will use the power of the purse and the power of the subpoena to get the job done. And McCarthy is the first speaker of the House who needed more than one ballot in a century since Frederick Gillette, who was also a Republican of the state of Massachusetts back in the 1920s. Now, just a short time ago, Lauren Boebert, who we mentioned, uh, voted present and was one of those members who initially voted and nominated other members aside from Kevin McCarthy. She tweeted out, quote, it's been a long week in D.C. and the pressure has been intense, but it had to be done. The 118th Congress will be one that does the business of the American. American people, not the special interests and lobbyists. Now, the House returns here on Capitol Hill on Monday. They will vote on the rules package that has been uh, negotiated behind closed doors in order to get that deal to get McCarthy into the speakership. But uh, there could be an issue for Republicans, Carl, in the sense that one Republican, Tony Gonzalez of Texas, says he's a no on that rules package. And if Republicans uh, lose a few more votes, that rules package may not pass. Back to you. Very interesting to follow. Logan Raddick, appreciate you getting up. Appreciate you being there for us. All right. Let's keep this conversation moving with Congressman Randy Weber from Texas. Uh, Congressman, welcome aboard. We have the Congressman. No, oh, Congressman, there you are, sir. Um, yeah. All right, cool. Excellent. So, sorry about that. A little technical stuff that my staff is really good at. Um, all right, so McCarthy, uh, obviously, now the speaker. A lot of rounds of voting, but, and you know, a lot of conservatives were, were very happy with the 20 holdouts and a lot of establishment people were not, but I think really good concessions were made in the sense that this is going to be a very conservative house because of those new changes in rules. What say you? Well, absolutely. And look, it also, <clears throat> pardon me, says to the American people, Congress will work things out. We will work night and day and we will fuss and fight hammer out the details, but we're going to get it right, and we did that last night. I absolutely agree, sir, and I appreciate you having that outlook on it, too, but Dan <laughs> Crenshaw, look, I make a, 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 a big point. He's a fellow SEAL. I make a big point not to criticize the guy um, ever. Uh, however, I disagreed with what he said, calling, you know, he said, we cannot let the terrorists win. I, I, w I would say to him, 
you know, why did he use that word? And do you think that that was helpful or hurtful in the process? Well, look, Carl, emotions ran high. People were tired. We worked long and hard. And, so, you know, in the, in the emotion of the minute, you know, the heat of the moment, something like that, things like that happen. Mm -hmm. There's a lot at stake for the American people. And, again, I think we're getting it done, and now it's time to get to work. Yeah, no, I, and I hope that he can come back together because, you know, as a, as a fellow team guy, we love his representation up on the Hill. But let's talk about some of the concessions that were made, okay? So hard line on debt limit. This is something where I was like, Cheering on, um, here's some of the other ones. Freedom caucuses on top committees, hold votes on uh, freedom back bills, single member votes, but also open primaries where they promised the Congressional Leadership Fund is no longer going to get involved in primaries, which might open the door to some other conserv more conservative uh, primary challenges. What do you think about all these concessions? Do you have any problems against any of them? Well, what you're going to see is we're going to hammer those out in a rules, on a rules vote. You've already mentioned Tony Gonzalez. Um, there's a lot of good things that we're getting. I'm very, very conservative, too, for Pete's sake. So, and I, by the way, uh, Carl, I voted against three speakers in my tenure in the Texas House and now up here. So I'm not afraid to take those hard votes. Um, but, yeah, you, you're going to see us hammer out those details. I've never voted for a debt ceiling increase. Uh, and as I already said, I voted against three speakers. So what you just laid out, the Republican conference is going to come together. We're going to hash those out, hammer those out, and the American people are going to be the beneficiaries. Right. So uh, Congresswoman <clears throat> Marjorie Taylor Greene was spotted with a, a DT on the phone, um, and those initials ring true to a lot of people. How effective was he in helping sway some of those 20 to actually get McCarthy over the finish line, do you think? Now, you said DTV. You have a little bit of echo. Uh, repeat that, please. Oh, so uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, was uh, photographed here handing the phone to, uh, looked like Matt Rosendale, with the initials DT as the person on the phone. Uh, obviously, Donald Trump was involved. He did endorse McCarthy. How influential was he in this entire process? Oh, I, I got you. I got you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, it's hard to say. Of course, he's very, very popular in my district. Very, very popular, really, with a lot of solid conservative Republicans. And he's announced he's running. Um, so he reached out. And, of course, Matt Gates uh, ultimately ended up nominating him. So I, I think you're going to we have to say he was influential. Oh, OK. Well, that's good. I got about 30 seconds left, sir. Um, do you think that this was this process was good? I mean, a lot of people called it chaos. Democrats are sitting back, putting their feet up, having a beer, laughing at the whole process. But this is good order and discipline. And I think, do you think we're a stronger country coming out of it? Absolutely. And I go back to what I said earlier. We hammered out the details. We fought tooth and nail. And for the most part, in a kind of way, where there's some ruffled feathers, where there's some heated remarks, absolutely. But that happens in a situation like this. Yeah. And uh, again, you're, we're fighting for Americans. We have different maybe plans, thoughts on how to get there. But at the end of the day, we all come together and we want to make our country stronger, make our country safer, secure our border, and make sure that we got our handle on spending. And you're going to see that under Kevin McCarthy. I, I sure hope so, sir. You have a very optimistic look, which I am very happy about because this was a very, uh, very tumultuous process. But you know what? Look, we can fight. It. Wolves can fight amongst the pack as long as they're one against the enemy on behalf of the American people. I'm good with that. Congressman, we appreciate your steadfast conservative values. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate y'all. All right. No crooked, crooked establishment. establishment. None of that twisting, twisting the truth. truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to don't think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me, me how, how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.